Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation, a very non-standard exponential equation. We have x to the power x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 2x plus 1. You probably noticed that we have a perfect square in the exponent. Is that going to help us? Let's go ahead and find out. So that might be a little misleading because I'm going to split it up into two pieces on the left hand side. Because notice that we have 2x plus 1 on the right hand side and we want it to be accompanied by something somewhat similar to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this first. Separate the x to the power x squared into this and the other factor is going to be x to the power negative 2x plus 1. So when you multiply you add the exponent and you get the expression. So notice that I have 2x plus 1 on the right hand side and the only thing I have on the left is powers of x. There is no x on the right hand side, which is kind of sad, right? So let's go ahead and include the x or multiply by x uh, by something. What am I going to multiply by? That's a good question. And 2x plus 1 will tell you. You are supposed to multiply both sides by x to the power 2x plus 1. And I'll tell you why in a little bit this is helpful. Of course, we need to do it on both sides. So let me go ahead and make some room here so that we can multiply this one by oops x to the power 2x plus 1 as well okay now after you multiply both sides by this first of all these two can be combined if you add their exponent and the reason why we combine these two but not the first one is because of this you see the opposite radicals by the way you don't have to do it this way you could also write this as 1 over x to the power 2x minus 1 and just multi cross multiply it will give you the same thing make sense okay great now let's go ahead and add the exponents it's going to give me 2 great that's beautiful because if you take a look at this very carefully you should be you should realize something do you see what i'm talking about i have x squared and then x to the power x squared and i have something times x to the power something did I make sense at all? Okay, let me show you. So here's how we can do it. This is x squared, and this is x to the power x squared. Get it? And this is 2x plus 1, and this is x to the power 2x plus 1. So what is that supposed to mean? And if you don't see what I'm talking about, you can also use substitution. For example, suppose x squared is equal to t, and 2x plus 1 is equal to u. Then we get something like this t times x to the t equals u times x to the u. Do you see what I'm talking about? That's the type of pattern we're talking about. And when do we see these kinds of patterns? With a very special function. What is that called? Lambert's w function. Now let's talk about Lambert's w function for a little bit. I want to show you what it uh, does. So whenever you have an expression like t e to the t and you apply Lambert's w, Lambert is a mathematician, by the way. You get t from here. Very simple, right? Since this is a product, and if you think about another function, let's say, that turns e to the t to t, this will be the log function, right? Since we have a product here, this is called product log. And that's how you actually write it in Wolfram Alpha and probably Mathematica, right? So, why do we use this? Because our expression is similar to that, but not exactly. So let's take the left-hand side first. How can I fix this so that it looks like t to the t? Because I don't have e here, first of all, right? So we're going to be using an identity. a equals e to the power ln a. So how can I write x to the power x squared like that? I can write it as e to the power ln x to the x squared. And you can move the x squared and kind of write it like this. Is that going to be helpful? Probably. Let's see. We can write it now as e to the power x squared ln x. But the other factor is just x squared. So that's kind of problematic because if you write these two together, you're going to get x squared. Oh, I could probably do the same e trick there, can I? Maybe. So we can write this as e to the power ln x squared, which can be written as e to the power 2 ln x times e to the power x squared ln x. Hmm. This didn't really give me t to the t, so I guess I'm not going to use this method, right? But at least I tried. I thought it was going to work, but it didn't, and that's okay. 
So that's the problem solving process. You try something, it doesn't work, you back up and try another one. So actually here, we don't even need that function. You know why? Because we have a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence. Think about it this way. Let's call this A and let's call this B. So we have something like A times X to the A equals B times X to the B. You know what I'm talking about? This implies, at least for one of the solutions, A equals B, right? If you replace A with B, you get the right hand side. Cool. So from here, what do we conclude? We conclude that, okay, x squared is supposed to equal to x plus 1. And that is verified by this. In other words, if x squared is equal to 2x plus 1, we have a solution. Houston, we have a solution. Okay? Not a problem. So, where do we go from here? Just by solving the quadratic, we should be able to get solutions. But are both solutions valid? That's a million dollar question. And that's a valid question too. So, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and use the quadratic formula to solve this problem or equation. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus, that turns into a plus, 4ac, that's going to give me another 4. Uh-oh, we're going to get square root of 2 from here, I think, right? 2 plus minus 2 root 2 divided by 2. Interesting, right? X equals 1 plus minus root 2 from here. If you wanted to split it up, because I think at some point we should, right? Because we need to check the validity of the solutions. 1 plus root 2 and 1 minus root 2. And what do these look like? Think about it. 1 root 2 is about 1.4, isn't it? I mean, at least I know one digit after the decimal, which is 4, because if you square 1.4, you get 1.96 because 14 squared is 196, right? So this is pretty close. I mean, close enough. So what does this one look like? 1 plus 1.4, which is about 2.4. And remember those values. 1 minus 1.4 is negative 0 0.6, right? Is that right? No. Negative 0 0.4. The other way around. Okay, cool. You get the idea. One of them is positive. One of them is negative. Are they both going to work? We need to check it out. So let's go ahead and maybe go to the original equation. By the way, with the original problem, we have this. I could have written this as follows, right? Like this. Would this help at all? What do you think? Well, if you multiply both sides by x to the power 2x plus 1, what are you going to get, right? Same thing. I don't think it's going to be a huge difference. It should give us the same thing. Oh, by the way, I didn't have to separate it, by the way. I just realized, actually, I could have directly multiplied by, you know, multiply by this because that would mean addition of exponents, right? I don't know why I separated it because I thought it was going to help for some reason. It kind of did, but anyways. <laughs> so let's get back here. So 1 plus root 2, do you think that's going to work? Well, let's plug it in. Replace x with 1 plus root 2. And then subtract 1 from it. That's going to give you root 2 squared. You're going to get 2. And then 2 times 1 plus root 2 plus 1. Are they equal? Question mark. Check. This would give me 3 plus 2 root 2. This would give me 3 plus 2 root 2. So, yes, definitely this is a solution. Nice. What about the other one? Let's check it out. If x is negative 1 minus root 2, which is... Is that the opposite? Uh oh I made a mistake. Sorry. That's 1 minus root 2. Never mind. So, 1 minus root 2 to the power, 1 minus root 2 minus 1 is negative root 2, square it, you get 2 again. On the right hand side, you get 1 minus root 2 plus 1. Are they equal? Let's check it out. This gives me 3 minus 2 root 2. This gives me 3 minus 2 root 2. So both of these should be solutions. Let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha. Let's see what it says. Do you think Wolfram Alpha will agree with us or can Wolfram Alpha solve an equation like this? What are your thoughts? Let's check it out. Ta-da! First, here's the graph. I didn't forget, so that's nice. And they seem to be intersecting at a single point. What is going on here? Uh-oh. Wolfram Alpha only provides 1 plus root 2 as a solution. Why do you think 1 minus root 2 is not listed as a solution? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.